We know a lot about Shlomo HaMelech, Solomon, the king. Probably one of the most widely things about him was what he asked of God. Do you remember that? What did Solomon ask from God? He could have asked for God for anything. What did he ask for? A listening heart. Most people say he asked for wisdom. He did not ask for wisdom. He did not ask for understanding. He did not ask for money. He did not ask for women. He did not ask for a big house. He did not ask for a shiny car. He didn't ask for any of those things. What he asked for was a lev shomea. A lev shomea. Lev means heart. Shomea is the ver is the, is the, uh, the participle that comes from the word means to listen, to hear. Same as shema. Hear, O Israel. So what Solomon asked for was a listening or a hearing heart. Often translated as understanding or wisdom because a heart that listens to God is indeed understanding and wise. But that's not exactly what he asked for. He asked for a listening heart. And God granted him such a heart. Because he asked for such a heart, he was given wisdom. Because he asked for a heart and didn't ask for these other things, he was granted wisdom. But God gave him that listening heart that he asked for. We also know that Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem. We know that. But there's a huge difference, scripturally, between the construction of the tabernacle in the wilderness by Moses and his team and the construction of the temple in Jerusalem by Solomon and his team. And it struck me during our men's meeting exactly what this difference was, and we're going to share a little bit about that. What is the difference? That's what we're going to talk about this morning. It's really neat. Let's pray. Avinu Malkeno, our Father, our King. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the continuing revelation through your word of who you are and what you are like, Lord, your nature. We thank you, Father, for uh, giving us the Holy Spirit to understand these things. And we thank you for your Son, Yeshua the Messiah, by whose, uh, by, uh, by whose power and authority uh, we can do things in him because he now lives in us and lives through us. We thank you, Father, for these things. Lord, change us today. Help us to see something that will draw us closer to you than we've ever been before. And Lord, do it in the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. It's in his name we pray. Amen. We got a, a video. Um, anyone seen Les Miserables, the new one? Not yet? It, Russell Crowe is in that. Uh, he's also in the clip that we're getting ready to see. And I've got a comment about that afterwards. So let's watch. Only will you receive the loyalty of his people and their love 
as well. So what would you have? Hmm? Castle for every man. Every Englishman's home is his castle. What do we do that? Your Majesty. It's liberty. Liberty by law. Liberty and justice for all. Sound familiar? After seeing Russell Crowe in Les Miserables, this new one at the end of last year, I do have a whole new respect for him. Um, his singing, he's not a singer, I say that. Um, but the fact that he was willing to do that, I mean, the role of Javert is not a singer. I mean, he's not a, just who he is. But his willingness to do that and his portrayal of Javert was admirable. In this movie, Robin Hood, in which he plays the title character, he comes back from the Crusades. We all know the Crusades. We're not going to sit here and judge the Crusades. It's not what this clip is about. Okay? But he comes back from the Crusades, and on his final crusade um, that, that Robin Hood is on, King Richard dies. Uh, he's tasked with bringing the crown back to, uh, back to Britain, uh, and he watches as uh, Richard's brother, King John, or John you know, becomes king. Um, John is seen here in this clip trying to rally the troops, so to speak, against the armies of France who are imminently due on the shores of Great Britain. Robin makes the statement, if you give people freedom, not only will you gain their loyalty, but their love. That's the key, the key passage in this clip. Okay? If you give people freedom, not only will you gain their loyalty, but their love. This is at the very heart of our discussion this morning. When we look at our Torah portion this morning, we see an incredible amount of details, as we mentioned. Okay? Just, just from the short reading that we had from, from this morning's passage, let's look at the details uh, in, in, in this reading. Remember, this deals just with the ark. Okay? These are all the details. Okay? Made of acacia wood. Dimensions are two and a half cubits by one and a half cubits by one and a half cubits. That's very specific. That means it's a little less than four feet long by a little more than two feet high and a little bit more than two feet wide. Over the wood is gold, inside and out. And around the top is molding. Now, granted, I will tell you, he didn't tell us which molding to get from Home Depot. He left that up to us but there's definitely molding around it, okay? And he says that. There are four gold rings, not five golden rings, okay, different, different gold rings. Okay, these are four gold rings that are cast, and they're supposed to be put on the feet of the ark, okay? But not just any particular way. They have to be put so that there's two on either side, or two on each side, rather, okay? Why? Because from that same acacia wood, they were supposed to create poles. Okay? But the poles can't be any thickness. They have to be designed so that the thickness of the pole fits exactly into these, these you know, gold rings that were cast. Okay? So the, the poles made out of this acacia wood uh, are also overlaid with gold. And they're supposed to go, it's not like you can just set them up here like this, you know, when you need them, just grab them, you know, slide them in the, pole, in the holes and, and head out. No, they live in the hole, in the, in the rings on the ark. That's how well they die. They, they get put in there and then they stay in there. Once they're made, they don't ever come out of those, those, those rings. Okay? Just a few details about the ark. That's just the ark. It doesn't include the cover for the ark. It doesn't include what goes into it. Okay? So there's a tremendous amount of detail that God gives to Moses. In fact, as I mentioned before, these instructions begin here in chapter 25. They don't end until chapter 31. That's a, a huge section of detail on the tabernacle, the functions of the tabernacle, the, the, the clothing that has to be worn while serving in the tabernacle. It's all about the tabernacle. And I think that... Um, 
It probably would have continued, but there was that silly little interruption in the middle there with something about a calf made out of gold. Okay? That interrupts the whole thing. So after that, we see the whole thing restated again. 